Hi folks, Simon here, welcome back to the channel. So I'm coming outside, I wasn't expecting to be doing another drone video so soon after the last one, but you know the weather's not been great here in the UK, it's been very cold and the last video I made we weren't able to do a whole lot because it was the minus temperatures. Now today we have a little bit of fortune with the weather, we have the blisteringly hot uh, temperature of two degrees, so yeah still a bit chilly but not actually freezing. I thought we'd come out, see if we can do a little bit more than we did last time. So, going to get the drone set up. There it is. And we'll see if we can get this thing in the air for a slightly more successful attempt. Okay, so I think we're good to go. Just get the trusty gloves on so that my hands don't freeze mid-flight, which I warn you could happen. Uh, right, let's go ahead and start recording here on the drone. Now, one thing I messed up with last time, uh, but hopefully have working this time, is the screen record feature on my phone. So, you should be able to get a nice picture of both here. Okay, uh, I'm actually going to take off uh, by putting the sticks in. I believe you can do so this way. Yep, and now we just need to raise the height. So that's a manual takeoff. Just bring that a little bit lower, face it towards the camera. Hopefully you guys can see that there. We're currently in normal mode. Say hello if you want. That's Mr. Droney that is. Uh, as you can see the hovering on this thing is absolutely fantastic. So the winds today aren't too bad. I think we've got about five mile an hour winds with nine mile an hour gusts or something like that. So not absolutely perfect, but about the most we can expect, I would think, for this time of year. Okay, right, so we're going to go a little bit higher to start with. Now, the first thing I want to test out is the quick shot feature. This is something I've never actually done before with this drone. So I'm not sure exactly how it's going to work. Hopefully we won't crash into anything because there's no active tracking on this particular model. Uh, just drop the gimbal a little bit. So I'm going to pause the recording on the drone itself. And we're going to switch over or try and switch over to find some of these quick shots there we go so the quick shots are where the drone will control itself in order to get a nice cinematic picture uh, for your pleasure so let's go ahead and uh, try the drone eat quick shot let's just set it to 250 feet and let's set it to 310 feet why not in fact let's just go the whole hog let's go 350 and then if we select start here uh, we need to do that do it okay so get rid of that so i'm just going to uh, drop the gimbal again so that i can paint myself here like i say this is the first time i've done this there we go so the drone will now actively track me it won't track any obstacles and that which is what i meant by no active tracking so it is going to be going in reverse here i need to keep an eye on it but let's go ahead and start the quick shot yeah and we are off Goodbye, everybody. See you next time. I'm only joking, not going anywhere yet. Yeah, it looks like the drone is uh, having lots of, well, it's got plenty of space, so it's not going to crash. I'll pop the controller down for a moment. Whee! And I do actually have a percentage I can see on the right hand side of the screen 61%. This is just one of several quick shots that we can do with the DJI Mini 2. A very neat feature. I'm not going to be using the others just yet. I want to save something for a future time. And it looks like we're just about done there with that particular quick shot. And it tracks me very well. and the aircraft will return itself to the start point. That's a nice feature. I guess it will take the exact same path it took to complete the quick shot. So you can literally, once you've started the quick shot, put the controller down, do your poses, whatever it is you want to do, uh, get some beautiful cinematic video, and you're good to go, aren't you? And here it comes. So not exactly the same position, but very, very close to it, I've got to say. 
very, very close. So let's just turn this thing around now. Just raise the gimbal up a little bit so I can actually see where I'm going. Yeah, I'll give you another shot of the drone look before we go off again. So in the last video, there we go. Uh, in the last video, I took it out over the Woodland Trust area. We got to about 2,700 feet, but I think the cold weather really prevented us from getting further. Now, as I said, it is very cold still today. Uh, we're looking at about two degrees, which is warmer than it was during the last video. So maybe we'll get a little bit further. What I'm gonna do though, is go ahead and start recording again. So we'll set it to 4K 30 FPS, tap that record button, and yeah, let's go for a spin, shall we? I'll show you sports mode first of all. Maybe we can go for a low shot here for a bit of fun, yeah? Let's go. We. I can see the drone, don't worry, we're not going to crash into anything. But that's going to look awesome, isn't it? A low shot like that. Okay, I think we'll stop about there. Right towards the end of the field. Uh, let's go a little bit more and then we'll lift ourselves above the trees. Okay, there are some power lines, you see. Uh, but we're way past those now. So there we have it, just going over 100 feet here. 180 feet. Uh, let's go to 214 feet so that we're nicely above people, not going to annoy them as they see our little birdie flying over them. And before we do anything else, I'm just going to check our settings to make sure return to home is all set up as expected. So uh, max altitude 393 feet, return to home altitude 328 feet. Uh, I think I'm going to drop that a little bit and the reason being is that if we do encounter a bit of wind, then the drone, if it gets lost, is going to go to a higher altitude where the wind's going to be even stronger. If we don't have control because we've lost signal, it's going to struggle to get back. So I think 246 feet, uh, which is actually higher than where we're at right, uh, right now, is more than enough. So we're not going to hit anything. Uh, we are down to 79%. That's interesting. So the cold weather is definitely having an impact on this battery. So something to be aware of. Also, it's a little bit foggy, which doesn't help. So I'll just raise the height a touch. See if we can get further than we did before. So we're just over a thousand feet now. The RC signal uh, has gone down to orange, but I'm gonna keep pushing it if we can. There we go. As we get to the 1800 feet mark. So I have actually pushed it quite a bit more than 2700 feet since owning this drone. Uh, but I haven't done that for a while. Okay, so this is where we start to have problems. Okay, so this is the 2700 feet mark. I'm going to just raise it again so that we can hopefully get some better uh, signal. There we go. Uh, the signal's come back to four bars, which is pretty good. Uh, previously, we could see the spires of the cathedral on the last video. I think we can just about do that today as well, uh, despite the fact it's a little bit foggy, as I say. Uh, but let's just head over a bit more if we can, so we can cross that 3,000 feet mark. Remember, the height limit in the UK is 400 feet. So we are getting close to that now. But the drone is recalculating at a good pace here. Bringing that signal back when it gets lost. And it looks like we might get to the 4,000 feet mark now. So vast improvement on our last video, where I did lose signal, as I say, at 2,700 feet. And it looks like the drone is actually dropping height by itself, so that's a bit of drift there in the wind. Uh, at these altitudes, we are going to be getting uh, more of that drift. So what I'm going to do now is just stop the recording, and let's see if we can get some photos at this range. Uh, so let's pop over to the photo. Okay. We could do pano shots, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm just going to take some shots here. Let's see what we can get. Let's see if I can get one of the city there. With a bit of the farmyards in the picture. There we go. And I don't know if I'll be able to see my land, my field, from here. But if we point back towards the red arrow, uh, and I'll take a photo there. Maybe once I've zoomed the image in later, I'll get a better chance of doing so. 
I don't know if I can see it in the picture yet from this distance though. And we'll get some more of the landscape. Looks like there's some water down there. One thing I would perhaps like to invest in is uh, one of the shields that you can get to cover your phone up. It's very difficult to see the screen with some of the sun glare that's coming on it right now. Okay, so some nice pictures. I'll show you those as I take them. Let's switch the recording back on. And maybe start heading back. So I'm not going to use return to home. One thing to note, by the way, is that I might end up having to. Uh, on the basis... Oh, I'm still in sport mode. Let's go back to normal mode. Uh, on the basis that, for some reason, I guess it's how the antennas are aligned. Once the drone is turned around and facing the antennas as it's doing now, you tend to get a weaker signal. So something to worth, uh, just worth noting there. So we've got a 3,700 foot journey ahead of us uh, with 64% battery. So I don't expect that will be a problem unless we somehow start to encounter stronger winds than we currently are. But I'm going at 15 miles per hour in normal mode, which is pretty good at this height, 352 feet. So remember, uh, we can go to sports mode if we do struggle a little bit with the wind and we can drop the uh, height of the drone as well. So the general thing that you need to be aware of is that the higher you are, the more wind you're going to encounter. But on the plus side, the higher you are, the better signal you're going to be getting as you're going to have a stronger line of sight to the remote controller antenna here. So uh, we're about two and a half thousand feet away now. Let's just take a, a brief pano shot here, shall we? Just do a full 360. We'll lift the gimbal up a touch, get that skyline in as well. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, there's a lot of fields around here, so um, that's you know a good reason for me to be practicing in this area where I live, since if I did lose control of the drone, then it's unlikely to cause any damage to anybody, since there's not many people about. And if the worst came to the worst, and I actually lost the drone, I can use the Find My Drone feature that's built into this app, which keeps track of the location of the drone and the last location before the signal was lost. And you can actually use that to recover the drone. And with all these fields and not many people around, um, obviously I'd have a, a good chance of being able to do that. So you can see over here, uh, as we look over to the southwest, the way that we're facing now, there's a much more a busier environment in terms of houses and properties so we're far more likely to encounter interference if we head over into that direction you see that lone tree in the middle though uh, that's where i am that's our little field there i mean it's not that little it's like two acres but in comparison to the to the neighbor's fields it certainly does look very small from this angle so the other thing as well I might show you with this drone is you can actually record in 60 frames per second. Now why would you want to do that, you might ask? Well that's perfect for getting slow-mo shots. So if you want to take some cinematic shots in slow motion then you have the option to do so with this drone from the sky. That building ahead there is actually my house. You can see from the sky the white building with the darker roof. Uh, you can just about see me down there can't you? I can, I, yeah, I can see the drone, so I'll give you a wave. I don't know if that's coming through. <laughs> you can just about see the orange dot, which is the landing pad here. Uh, right, so let's start bringing the drone back down. Oops, no, wrong way. <laughs> that's up. Like I say, still practicing here. And I am trying to be cautious. I'm really enjoying myself with this drone, I've got to say. I've taken it out quite a bit over the last two weeks, only into my own field here, you understand, but uh, I haven't got on board yet. Been having quite a blast, if I'm honest with you. Even if it is a bit chilly at the moment. So I'm going to bring it down, bring it a little bit closer. Then I'll need to try and find a way of recording something in slow motion. But I've got to say, there's not a whole lot of movement. <laughs> it's doing my field. So that's going to be a bit of a tricky thing to uh, actually do. Uh, if we leave that there, just raise the gimbal up a little bit. Uh, I've got one idea. Okay, I'm going to stop the main recording 
We'll start recording in 60 frames per second, and this is where I'll probably have an accident. Uh, if I just pull the drone back a little bit, so I don't go crashing into it, I'm going to try and jump off this table. Just to show you the slow mo recording, you understand, not because it's a particular fun experience for me to do. Uh, so what we do is we go into the settings here. Now, slow mo can't be 60 frames a second can't be chosen at 4K. You have to drop it down to 2.7 or to 1080p. So we'll drop it down to 2.7, which is the next best thing. Select 60 frames per second there. And let's start recording, shall we? And now I've got to try and climb up on this table. So I'll drop the uh, controller down. Oh, this isn't going to be uh, a pleasant a pleasant sight. Sorry guys, I apologise in advance, so uh, that all the way to put on over Christmas doesn't mean I'll come crashing through this thing. Right then, I'm going to jump towards the drone and then we'll see it in slow motion. Here it goes. Oh. <laughs> Oh, but I'll tell you something guys, it's a bleeding good job that I had it at the height I had it at because there was no stopping me. After I landed then, I couldn't stop, I had to keep running so I didn't fall over. I'd have gone head first into it if it was any lower. Oh dear. Anyway folks, there we have it. So what did we do? We got a quick shot to start with as the drone came backwards, got a nice cinematic shot of me. Uh, we took the drone out to a much further range, 4,000 feet. Then we got that slow-mo shot. I'll be interested to see how that looks in post. Anyway, folks, that's it for me for today. If you want to see more drone videos with my Mini 2, I'm having a lot of fun with this. I really hope you guys do want to see more. Give me an excuse to bring it back out again. Then let me know in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed watching. Tap that like button as well. And I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.